Well, okay, so I'm going to talk to you about stem cell therapies. This is the SVT, for Society Gene Therapy, but uh, I'm going to take a, a sideways step to, to introduce you to stem cell therapies. I think these two things are uh, uh, things that are going to converge, they're already converging. Uh, Adrian's already spoken to you about the, the Bob Boy trial. I'm going to, uh, to persuade you that that equally was a stem cell trial as much as it was a gene therapy trial. So I'm also going to do a little bit of an album. I think I'm going to walk away from this just for a minute or two. Can I, can I ask the audience, who's heard of stem cells? Put your hands up if you heard of stem cells. Can, can I choose somebody to put their hand up and tell me what a stem cell is? Anybody brave enough to do that? I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> can anybody give me an example of a stem cell? What do people think of when they think of stem cells? Well, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. So that's, that's half of my talk. Uh, give me an example of a stem cell. What do, what do people think of when they think of stem cells? Sorry? Thank you. Yeah. So there are, there are many different kinds of stem cells. One, one that is a focus at the moment are embryonic stem cells. Usually when I tell people I work with stem cells, they say, oh, hey, embryonic stem cells. And yes, part of my work is with embryonic stem cells. Uh, but part of it isn't as well. Part of it is with some of the other kinds of stem cells that there are. So, if you want to tell you what is stem cell therapy, hopefully I'm going to describe to you uh, what the vast array of stem cells are that we, we deal with. So, first and foremost, uh, stem cell therapy, is it fantasy or reality? This is, again, we've been talking about, is, is this the future or is it the here and now? So I'm going, to, I'm going to show you a few, um, a selection of red top um, uh, titles here. And uh, this actually from, from Adam's talk. Adam, you inadvertently gave me a wish list here. And I'm going to answer these wish lists in red top form. So, testicle stem cells, curing Alzheimer's disease, according to the sun. Larger breasts, according to the Daily Express. So these are actually breast augmentation. Uh, what else do we have? We have uh, we've got facelifts, so stem cells for facelifts in people. I'll include one from every red top, and I'll include the dead, dead man from the dead express. Great. Uh, new joints, so we're going to grow new joints, new legs. Uh, new eyeballs, okay, with eyes. Uh, new eyeballs, I'm not so sure. Uh, and the, the latest one, of course, is we're going to grow new hair. So Wayne really should have gone stem cell. <laughs> uh, okay, so this, this is the fantasy. Let's, let's reconnect with the reality. And uh, hopefully the BBC is, uh, is going to help us there. So, uh, we've already heard about these seconds. Um, I, I would like to see this, and I'm sure Adrian would agree with me, that this, this is based around gene correction in a stem cell component from the bone marrow. So this was a long time ago, we, we spoke to Adrian, we've heard all about that. So this, this is the start of stem cell therapy. So what was really exciting for stem cell biologists is last year, the, uh, an American company, Geron, embarked on the first ever embryonic stem cell clinical trial. So this is, this is a landmark, okay? Uh, but let's go back to this country. Again, in this country, we have uh, stem cell trials earmarked for MS. We already have proof of uh, stem cell therapy in growing stem cells on an artificial windpipe. So this is, this is including components of tissue engineering along with stem cells. This is globally referred to as regenerative medicine. Uh, also, the UK stem cell trial uh, earmarked for stroke. This is in Glasgow. Again, Professor Keith Newark. So the, these are all UK-based processes. Uh, and again, you're going to be hearing from Robin Alley later on. And here we have the first UK-European uh, embryonic stem cell trial for a, an eye disease style of macular dystrophy. So this is reality. This is here and now. So uh, I'd like you to see that we, we are we are here. So is this all here now? Has this been going on for some time? Understand stem cell therapy has been around for a long time. Well actually 
Yes, they have. And we've all heard of bone marrow transplantation, so we've been pointed out. So, first ever bone marrow transplantation, 1956. Uh, this guy, E. Donald Thomas, was awarded Nobel Prize in 1990. So we're talking many, many decades of <coughs> stem cell therapies. We just didn't really call them that. Again, core blood transplantation. So this is the umbilical cord. I'm sure you're all aware of companies that, uh, well, you're a bit young at the moment, but when you, you start to think about having children, uh, you may be asked, do you want to store your, uh, your cord blood? And the reason for this is because there is a history already of cord blood transplantations being successful. Uh, 1988, Franconia anemia was successfully treated with a cord blood transplantation. And this child is, is, is doing very well to this day. So it's, it's already there, it's already around. Uh, there are, basically our understanding of stem cells has changed and our ability to use them is advancing. So what is a stem cell? Again, a very intelligent person in the audience has already told me one of these two things. The key things that define a stem cell are self-renewal. And what self-renewal essentially means is that this cell can divide and divide and divide, hopefully. <laughs> And basically, it stays the same. It keeps its key attributes. And the key attribute that we're interested in is potency. So essentially, this stem cell is able to turn into two or more kinds of other cells. All right. So it's a progenitor for other cells. It's there essentially to repopulate uh, cells. So here you can see that this cell can then turn into two different cells. Okay? So, where do we find these cells? What kind of stem cells are there? Now, as I say, the vast majority of media is obsessed with embryonic stem cells at the moment. We'll go into these things as I go along. Embryonic stem cells, we all know about those. Fetal stem cells, so this would include cord blood stem cells. So these are fetally derived stem cells. It also includes cells taken from the amniotic fluid. Uh, Adult stem cells. This is less talked about, and the interesting thing is that these are what we're populated with, you know, in our bodies, and these are what we generate our tissues. That's what we generate at the moment, and as we grow. Now, the thing is that these are, are less appropriate for therapy at the moment, uh, apart from the, the, the bone marrow stem cells that we've talked about. But there is a lot of research in this area. And then the new guys on the block induced pluripotent stem cells. I uh, will go into that a, a, a little later. These are essentially an alternative to embryonic stem cells. So, the embryonic stem cells, as I said, we, we have this, uh, this, this idea, this, sorry, this, uh, this ability to self renew. And so, I've got a video here. I'm not, here. Can we try playing this? So, this is actually some stem cells growing in the lab. And you can see these, these colonies here of stem cells. And you can see, just over, this is over about 48 hours. You can see these cells have a massive capacity to grow and divide. And what that means is that you can take cells, a small amount of cells, so from a disrupted embryo, so of course this is all under informed consent for unwanted embryos. These will be taken, they're able, we're able to do this in the UK at the moment. You can then culture these cells, and so you have billions and billions and billions of these. You then, you activate the potency component. And you're able to differentiate these into virtually any cell type in the whole human body. So the, the concept here is, for example, for the liver. If you have a, a liver disease, your, your liver is failing, that you can, you can take embryonic stem cells, you can amplify these up to huge quantities, then change them into liver cells, and then with those liver cells, you can potentially transplant those into a patient uh, to provide them with a healthy liver again. So this is the concept. Obviously, uh, this, this is in process, as I've referred to at the moment. There are a number of embryonic stem cell trials, mainly in spinal cord injury and uh, the, the uh, macular dystrophy trial on the eyes. So, fetal stem cells. This is another area of great interest. As I said before, there are stem cells that circulate in the amniotic fluid of the, of the, uh, the, the, the surround fetus. And then also at birth, the umbilical cord is known to contain stem cells that are able to differentiate into blood cells. And so these can potentially be used to treat 
leukemias or, uh, or blood diseases in, in the future for that child. And so that's the concept of the storage of, of cord blood. So then the other source of stem cells is in, in the animal human body. And so every major lung has its own set of stem cells here in the lungs. Uh, I'm clicking away. There we go, little flash in the heart. All of these major organs, the liver, they all contain what we call stem cell niches. And so if we have the capacity to direct therapies at these niches, then potentially, for example, gene therapy, and this is where these two worlds collide again, if you're able to apply gene therapy to these stem cells, then what you know is you're going to hit the cells, you're going to repair the cells that are then going to reconstitute that tissue, you know, renew it as we go along, as we wear out, it gets renewed, it gets renewed, and we renew it with cells that actually work and don't have disease. So again, this is where these two worlds can combine. So the here and now is that bone marrow transplantation, as I said, is essentially the stem cell therapy. There is the, the boy in the bubble approach, uh, which Adrian's lab and others have taken, where you can take bone marrow out, you can then treat it with a gene therapy, make the cells better, and then put them back in again. Uh, you can do what the French do and eat it. I think it's probably better than we actually use it and take it out and, and work on it. So then finally, we have induced pluripotent stem cells. So as I referred to with embryonic stem cells, there is a, a moral ethical issue here. Some people are for, some people are against, and that's, that's a wider issue. So this, this was an issue in the States uh, during the Bush administration. These guys went out and looked for another way to make pluripotent stem cells. Stem cells that can turn into any cell type in the whole body. So actually they were beaten to it by the Japanese. So this very clever guy here, Shinya, Shinya Yamanaka, he works out that if you put just these four genes, OP4, SOX2, KLF4, CMEC, if you put those four genes into a skin cell, it reprograms itself and it turns into a pluripotent stem cell, which essentially has all the characteristics of an embryonic stem cell. So this is a major event. This is, this is kind of uh, a paradigm shift in regenerative medicine. So now we have the potential to make pluripotent cells that can turn into any kind of cell type, that can self renew forever, indefinitely, we can make them from a patient's skin cell. So there are some certain, there are certain safety issues that have, to be, that have to be addressed with IPS cell technology at the moment. But there is huge potential in this. And so hopefully this will be something that is driven towards clinical trials in the future. So finally, I'm going to just talk about something that's been in the news over the last week or so regarding uh, embryonic stem cell work and does have an effect on trials in this country. <coughs> so, as I say, we're one of the world leaders in this area of embryonic stem cell therapy. There are things going into the clinic, first in Europe, uh, with, with the, the eye disease. Inevitably, these trials have to be backrolled by large pharmaceutical companies. GE Healthcare, GE is one of the biggest companies in the world, Pfizer is one of the major pharmaceutical companies. Both of these companies are involved in embryonic stem cell trials and, uh, and the production and manufacture of embryonic stem cell lines for therapy. Now last week there was a ruling in the European Court of Justice uh, that was raised by Greenpeace that the use of embryonic stem cells for commercial gain should not happen. Now actually, Part of that I agree with, uh, and I think it's a it's a it's a complex moral and ethical argument. So okay, so commercial gain using embryonic stem cells cannot happen in this country. So what's going to happen is that these companies, ironically, are now going to go to the U.S. because Obama has changed rulings in the U.S. regarding embryonic stem cells, uh, and we are going to potentially lose some of these critical clinical trials in this country. Um, so, you know, this, this ruling it has kind of ethical correctness about it, 
uh, but there are consequences for human health. So, in summary, mass poetic stem cell therapies are already used to treat disease. Embryonic stem cell therapies are about to become a reality. They are becoming a reality. Cord blood stem cells have a future potential. Yeah. So, when you do come to have your children, and somebody comes and asks you, do you want your cord blood saved? It's a, it's a very serious question these days. Uh, and in my, in my mind, IPS cells hold huge potential for therapy in the future. So I hope I've persuaded you that uh, there's a big future for stem cells and that gene therapy and stem cell therapies will be combined in this process. Okay, thank you very much.